in continuation with the lecture 4 let us do some more observations and in this lecture we will determine the jacobian matrix for a given function so observation number third suppose f is a function from the subset s of rn to rm and uh, because the range of f is uh, rm so f f m components so you may call it f1 f2 fm where each fi is a function from s to r i is varying from 1 to m now suppose u is any direction in rn and f dash cu that is directional derivative of f at c in the direction u exists so by the definition of directional derivative we can write f dash cu to be equal to the limit h is going towards 0 f of c plus h u minus f c upon h now f of c plus h u because f has n component m components so we can write it as f1 c h plus h u comma up to f m c plus h u minus f of c can be written as f1 c f2 c up to f m c upon h now we can do point wise addition means coordinate wise addition for these two vectors so we can write it as f1 c plus h u minus f1 c comma dash 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 f m c plus h u minus f m c upon h now one thing we can do we can divide h to each of its coordinate so we can write it like this now we can take limit inside and put it in each of the coordinate so when we put limit on each of its coordinate then what will happen is that that will by the definition of directional derivative of fi we can write it as fi dash c u so this is f1 so f1 dash cu and this is fm dash cu so there will be dash here so this is fm dash cu now note one thing because we have assumed that f dash cu exists so it means this whole term will exist and the value of f dash cu will be equal to the value of f1 dash cu up to the value of fm dash cu so this also implies that if we talk about the kth partial derivative then kth partial derivative will be dk fc is equal to dk f1 c up to dk fmc so it simply means that if you want to determine the directional derivative in the direction of u then you have to determine the directional derivative for each of the coordinate and put it together that will give you the directional derivative of f in the direction of u at the point c now observation four because jacobian is a matrix of a linear transformation so before introducing the jacobian let me recall what is the matrix of a linear transformation so suppose tc from rn to rm be a linear transformation further suppose that b1 is equal to e1 e2 en b standard basis of rn and b2 is equal to e1 dash e2 dash up to em dash be the standard basis of rm a standard basis means ei denotes a term whose i -th term is 1 and the other entries are 0 so once again ei denotes an n tuple whose i -th entry is 1 and other entries are 0 similarly ei dash denotes an m tuple whose i -th entry is 1 and other entries are 0 and these two are actually the ordered basis now suppose t e1 because e1 is an element of rn and t is a linear transformation so t e1 will be an element of rm because t e m t e1 is an element that is equal to w1 is an element of rm so this w1 can be written as a vector in rm so suppose w1 is equal to w11 w21 up to wm1 similarly t of e2 is equal to suppose w2 then it can be written as 
it will have m component and this m component let us note as w12, w22 and wm2. So what you have to do is that you have to determine the image of the basis elements of B1, TE1, TE2 and TEN and then whatever the vector you will get, whatever the vector we will get, we will write it in the combination of the basis of B2, the combination of basis of R, Rm that is B2 and uh, whatever the coefficients of the basis element we will denote it as W11, W21 and WM1 and similarly for W2 if we will write as a linear combination of the basis of Rm that is B2 then it, we will get the coefficients and we will write the coefficients at W12, W22 and WM2 and similarly T of En we will determine suppose it is Wn and we will write Wn as a linear combination of the vectors of the basis B2 then uh, suppose the coefficients are W1n w2n up to wmn and now what is the matrix of t with respect to the basis b1 b2 we will write these vectors in the columns so the first vector in the first column w11 w21 up to wm1 second vector in the second column and so on so we will get a matrix of the size m cross n so this is the matrix called the matrix of the linear transformation T. Now come to the Jacobian matrix. What is Jacobian matrix? So suppose F is a function from S contained in Rn to Rm be a differentiable at a point C in S and uh, let us denote the derivative of F by Tc. Tc is also denoted as F dash C. So in some book you will get F dash C. Then Tc or F dash C is a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. The matrix of Tc or F dash C is called the Jacobian matrix. Now let uh, this be the standard basis of Rn because uh, F is from Rn to Rm so Tc will also be from Rn to Rm. So we assume even E to En to be the standard basis of Rn. So what we have to do is that we have to determine the image of even E to En under Tc. So Tc even by definition Tc even is actually F dash C even because if total derivative exists then its value is equal to the directional derivative at the point C and uh, directional derivative in the direction of even means the first partial derivative d1fc. Now just now we have done one observation with the help of that we can write it as d1f1c d1f2c up to d1fmc. Similarly tc e2 is d2fc and d2f1 this can be written as d2f1c d2f2c and d2fmc uh, note that uh, f1 f2 fm are the components of f because f is uh, the function from rn to rm so f will have m component and these are the m components of the function f1 f2 fm so similarly tc en can be written as dn fc is equal to dn f1c d2 f2 c up to dn fmc and uh, then the matrix of tc or f dash c is called the jacobian matrix and uh, it is denoted as dfc suppose we denote the jacobian matrix by dfc then dfc can be written as uh, these component to be written in, in the column form so the components are d1 f1c d1 f2c and dm fmc so we will put in the column d1 f1c d2 d1 f2c and dm fmc similarly the second component was d2 f1c d2 f2c and d2 fmc and uh, lastly t c en when we will determine then the components will be dn f1c dn f2c up to dn fmc so we will write uh, it like this and this will become our Jacobian matrix. So let us do some examples to understand this Jacobian matrix. Now the example number one suppose f is a function from r2 to r3 and this function is defined as f of xy is equal to x square plus y minus 6 to x y cube and uh, we are to determine the Jacobian matrix matrix df denote the Jacobian matrix of the function at the point 1 1 by the definition of Jacobian matrix because f is a function from r2 to r3 so it will have three component f1 f2 f3 so what will be the Jacobian matrix just now we have defined 
d f 1 1 will be d 1 f 1 1 1 d 1 f 2 1 1 and d 1 f 3 1 1 similarly d 2 f 1 1 1 d 2 f 2 1 1 and d 2 f 3 1 1 so what is f 1 f 2 f 3 f 1 f 2 f 3 are the three components so this is f 1 so f 1 x y is x square plus y minus 6 uh, f 2 x y is 2 x and f 3 x y is x y cube so first partial derivative of f1 that is d1 f1 at the point 1 1 del by del x f1 this is 2x at the point 1 1 so x is equal to 1 so we will get the value 2 similarly d2 f1 1 1 is del by del y f1 xy so what is this this is the second partial derivative so derivative with respect to second variable that is y at the point 1 1 so you can see when you will differentiate it with respect to y you will get 1 1 at the value 1 1 so because it is constant so it will remain as it is so it is 1 similarly d1 f2 1 1 so f2 xy is 2x and uh, 1 means uh, with respect to x so its derivative is 2 and uh, because it is constant so its value is 1 1 is also 2 now d2 f2 1 1 so f2 is 2x so so when you will take f2 with respect to y its derivative is 0 so at 1 1 it is also 0 so it is 0 similarly f3 does not contain x so the first partial derivative that is derivative with respect to x will be 0 so d1 f3 1 1 is 0 and d2 f3 1 1 is uh, del by del y f1 xy so with respect to y you will get 3y square at 1 1 y is equal to 1 you will put so you get the value 3 so you get the value 3 so then the matrix is 212003 so it is a 3 cross 2 matrix so this is the jacobian matrix of f at the point 1 1 now note one thing that if you have a function from the function this function you can see is from r2 to r3 so the jacobian matrix will be a matrix of 3 cross 2 matrix so this is 3 first and then 2 3 cross 2 matrix so always jacobian matrix will be like this so okay we will continue in the next lecture and with some more examples